G'day team, and today we're going to be looking at how to build the candelabras I used in the Lunar Park Ghost Train refurbishment. These look really nice, both in terms of set dressing and as a great little effect in every scene I put them in. The ones in the Ghost Train were wired into the overall effect system and ran off 12 volts. Today we're going to make a more portable version that runs off a battery pack and will work as a decoration or as part of a cool old timey costume. To start with, we're going to 3D print the basic pieces. Now, I've put the files for these up on the MakerWorld 3D file sharing website. I've also included the print profiles I used to print the ones I have here. These were printed on the Bamboo Labs X1C 3D printers, but should work on any good quality 3D printer. Like my sconces, I printed these in a matte black PLA. Give that video a watch to see why I choose this material and why I use some of the techniques that I do. Like knowing the distance a prop is going to be seen from, it's also important to know the angle that it's going to be seen from. When making the candelabras for the ghost train, I knew that any scene they were in was going to be next to a train, and only seen from one side. To the ones I installed were entirely missing their back halves, oh, except for the base. You'd never be able to see that the backs of them were completely open, and it meant that I had easier access to wiring them up at any point during the build. Have a watch of my video about retheming the Luna Park Ghost Train to learn more about some of the fun things and choices we made. For this candelabra though, I've updated the design to be reviewed from all angles, which means we're going to be a bit more careful about how we put everything together. But as I said before, the first thing we're going to do is 3D print everything and get ready for assembly. Like the sconce, we're going to have to remove a few supports, mostly for the battery case, but then our cleanup is done. Unlike the sconce, the candelabra gets painted once it's assembled, and as the internal angles are far too sharp for the wire to go through after assembly, we have to put in some wires early and assemble around them. Now I'm cutting my wires extra long to make sure there is enough spare on each side, which means I know I'm going to lose some later on, but that's okay. We're going to start by laying and gluing a pair of wires down each track of the arms of the candelabra. This section is known as the labra, making sure there's plenty of wire on each side. Once our wires are in place, we're going to glue on the other half of the labra and sandwich them in. I'm going to use my very cheap super glue and you'll be amazed at how wonderfully well it works. Let that dry for the moment and we're going to get both halves of the column. Now to feed the wires down the column we're going to have to hold the wires a little bit taut, there's not a lot of space here and then hold one half of the column at the bottom of the labra to ensure there's not too much excess wire between the two of them before we glue them together. Once these two halves have dried together, we can now glue these two parts together. That's the hard part done. Now we can feed the wires through the hole in the base and glue the column into position. Now we can sand everything upright and glue the candle holders onto the labra. Now that everything is glued together, we can paint the candelabra. If you want to make this a really great close-up prop, you can take the time to fill in the edges where the halves of the column and the labra meet to get a perfectly smooth finish. I'd recommend a standard car filler, which you can then sand back and spray with a base primer all over. For me though, the print quality is good enough that I don't notice the join and I am happy to just paint. Whether or not you're filling and applying a base coat, we need to protect the wires we've so carefully threaded through our construction and painter's tape is perfect for this. 
we need to wrap up our wires in painter's tape and make sure they're not in the way of any of the places we're going to spray paint. It's okay if you get paint on the tape as we're going to peel the tape off later. With our wire safe, we can stand the candelabra upright and give it a light spray with a metallic paint of your choice. Like the sconce, I enjoy the metallic effect of simply dusting the paint from a very high angle, throwing the shape of the prop detailing into relief. If you want to give this a more tarnished look, be a bit less careful with your paint application, letting some parts get slightly heavier blotches than others. It really gives the prop some depth incredibly easily. Now leave it to dry and make a cup of coffee. When dry, we can unwrap the wires and get to more gluing. Next, we need to attach our candles in place. For these, I use Bamboo Lab Basic PLA that has a very slight transparency to it, which allows the light from the candle flames to shine through, as if the candles were made of real wax. A small effect, but a great one nonetheless. So what we're going to do is pass through the wires and glue the candles into place. We're also going to rotate each of the candles a bit so you get a variation of the wax strips when looking at either side of the candelabra. Now we have access to the wires at the end of the candles. It's time to solder on our flames. It's a bit fiddly soldering these on after the wire has passed through everything, but there's extra space in the candles themselves to push in any excess wire. So we'll cut the wire about three centimeters from the top of the candle, expose a bit of the metal inside and slide some heat shrink onto every wire so we can cover up our solder joints later on. As I talked about in my video of making the sconces, soldering is all about heating up the elements so that the solder itself is sucked onto where it needs to be, allowing for the easy flow of electricity. For these, we put a little bit of solder on the soldering tip once it's heated and hold it over our joint until we see the solder get sucked into place. Once done and left for about a minute to cool, we can slide on our heat shrink and use a lighter to fit them into place. Do this for all three of our flames and then using a bit of hot glue, affix them to the end of the candles hiding our excess wire as you do so. Now on to the electronics. Much like the sconce, we want to use a three volt power supply to power our three volt LED flames. However, in this case, we need to know another piece of the electricity puzzle, which is how voltages work when in series versus in parallel. In series, the voltage is divided up by the elements in the circuit. We saw this when working out how we'd wire up 12 volts to the sconce, where we used a resistor to soak up some extra voltage we didn't want. However, when we line things up in parallel, the original voltage goes out along every line of the circuit. The practical output of which is that if we have our three volt battery and all of our fake fire LEDs in one series, each LED would get one volt. But if we put our LEDs parallel to each other, they all get the three volts that we want. However, electricity isn't free. So instead of the 150 hours of brightness we get from our sconce, we divide our time amongst each of our LEDs. And instead of 150 hour runtime, we divide it by three and get a 50 hour runtime. If you wanted to put them all in series, you could use a nine volt battery, but they tend to have less power than two AA batteries. So you'd only get about 25 hours of light. So we're going to use the same AA battery holder we used in the sconce and wire our LEDs in parallel. Wiring these up is pretty easy in parallel. At the base of the candelabra, we're going to take all of our positive wires, in this case, the ones without a black line, and we're going to twist them together along with the positive output from our battery terminal. We're then going to take all the negative wires, in this case, the ones with the black line on them, and twist them together with the negative battery terminal. Once we've done this, we can put some solders to join them all together, and then some heat shrink or electrical tape to seal up our ends. We can then glue the excess wire in place on the underside of the candelabra. Now I'm going to be able to want to access both sides of this to easily add and remove batteries in the future. So I'm just going to put some glue tack on the base of the battery pack to hold it in place. And that's it. You've now got a wonderfully spooky candelabra that you can carry around as part of a costume, decorate your house with for Halloween, or use as a very annoying reading light. All the files for this are on my Maker World page. Try it yourself.